We're continuing our study of the topology of the real numbers. Here we want to look at the notion of a closed set. So let's look at the definition first. So a set capital A of real numbers is said to be closed if it contains all of its limit points. So in the previous video, we introduced the notion of a limit point. Let's recall what that is real quick. So a number A, which is a real number, is a limit point of the set capital A if for all epsilon bigger than zero, the epsilon A intersect A contains a point other than A. So this necessity of this being a point other than A is super important. And some texts actually get around explicitly saying this by making this thing instead of an epsilon neighborhood something called a deleted epsilon neighborhood, which is essentially just this epsilon neighborhood subtracted out the number A itself. So generally, we want our careful definitions in mathematics to work alongside our intuition. So from calculus or pre-calculus even, you will learn about closed intervals. And so this interval B, C, so that's all the real numbers between B and C, including B and C. And so a closed interval should most definitely be a closed set, otherwise our intuition isn't working very well. And the closed interval is a closed set, and that's what we'll prove in this first claim before we look at a classic result. So we're gonna do this by proving that every element from this closed interval is a limit point of this closed interval. So let's go ahead and suppose that we have an element from this closed interval, and we are given some epsilon bigger than zero. And what we wanna do is show that this intersection, the epsilon neighborhood centered at X with the closed interval is non-empty. And in fact, it contains a point other than X itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do this in three cases. So our first case will be when X is equal to B. In other words, it's the left-hand endpoint of this closed interval. Now, before we jump into the proof that this is a limit point, I wanna go ahead and sketch up what's going on here. So we've got this closed interval from B to C, which I'll just draw like this, great. And then we have set X equal to this B, and then we're given some arbitrary epsilon bigger than zero. Maybe it's like that. And we want to ensure that the intersection between this epsilon neighborhood and the original interval is non-empty. And it in fact contains an element which is not X or not B in this case. But this epsilon can be anything in the world. So this could be a little bit tricky because sometimes this may extend way out here, and sometimes it might be very, very small. So I'm, I'm actually gonna break this down to a, to a couple of subcases. So maybe subcase number one is that epsilon is less than C minus B. In other words, epsilon is less than the length of that interval. But in that case, we have B plus epsilon over two will most definitely be in the closed interval because we have not achieved the number C yet because we haven't moved the distance of the interval, but then it's also inside of this epsilon neighborhood, which is exactly what we need for this to be a limit point. So let's go ahead and write that down. B is a limit point. Great. And now let's look at subcase two, and that will be epsilon is bigger than C minus B. In other words, epsilon is larger than the length of the interval. But notice in that case, we have the interval, the whole closed interval is a subset of this epsilon neighborhood. But then if it's a subset of the epsilon neighborhood, then it's most definitely a subset of the epsilon neighborhood intersected with itself. Great, and then the closed interval contains lots of elements which are not equal to B. For instance, it contains C. And I should have said way up here that we're assuming that B and C are different, otherwise it's not super interesting. Okay, so in the case that X is the left-hand endpoint, we're okay, X is a limit point. Now the second case will be X is a right-hand endpoint, and similarly, X will be a limit point in that case as well. 
So the next thing that I want to do is look for what if X is in between B and C. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. So the last thing that we need to look at is the case when X is between B and C. We covered the cases when X was one of the endpoints already. So let's sketch up what's going on. So we've got this closed interval B to C. So maybe I'll draw that in blue. And then we've just chosen some point X, which is between B and C. And then also we need to be given some arbitrary epsilon bigger than zero, again, because the definition of a limit point requires there being some arbitrary epsilon bigger than zero. Okay, great. Now what we wanna do is maybe sketch up what this arbitrary epsilon bigger than zero looks like. So it looks something like that. And now we'll again jump into a couple of cases. So maybe case number one is that epsilon is less than the minimum of x minus b and c minus x. Great. But what that ensures is that this epsilon neighborhood is completely contained within the open set BC. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have the epsilon neighborhood, V epsilon X is a subset of the open interval B comma C. But now that itself is a subset of the closed interval. Great. Now all we have to do is find someone which is inside of this epsilon neighborhood, which is not equal to X. But that's new, not too hard. So notice X is not equal to X plus epsilon over two, but that's going to be inside of V epsilon X. But then since V epsilon X is a subset of the closed interval, that is also inside of the closed interval, which is exactly what we needed for X to be a limit point. So let's go ahead and write that down. So in this subcase one, we have X is a limit point. Good. And now in the subcase two, so this is going to be the case when this epsilon neighborhood extends past the left-hand endpoint or the right-hand endpoint. Now we can um, arithmetically write that as epsilon is bigger than or equal to X minus B or epsilon is bigger than or equal to C minus X. And I'll let you guys look at each of those sub subcases individually. It's not too hard to see that if epsilon is bigger than X minus B, then what you get is B, which is not equal to X, is an element of the epsilon neighborhood intersected with the closed interval, which is exactly what we need. And we get something similar happening in that other case. So we're trying to prove that the closed interval B comma C is a closed set under the definition that we talked about over here. So far we have shown that all elements of B comma C are limit points of B comma C. So it at least contains those limit points. Now, in order for it to contain all of the limit points, we can finish that off by showing that if X is not in BC, then it is not a limit point. So let's go ahead and write that down. That's exactly how we'll finish this off. So we want to show if X is not in the closed interval BC, then it is not a limit point of BC. Okay, so let's get to that. So let's suppose that X is not in BC. But what that tells us that is that we have two cases. So case number one is X is strictly less than B, which that tells us that B minus X is strictly bigger than zero. Good. And now let's go ahead and take epsilon to equal one half B minus X. And then we will notice that V epsilon X intersected with the closed interval B comma C is empty. But that being empty is exactly what we need for X to not be a limit point. Is not a limit point just by the negation of this notion of a limit point over here.
Okay, and then the second case will be the case when x is bigger than c, and that goes pretty much the same way. So if x is bigger than c, well that tells us that c minus x is bigger than zero, and now we can take epsilon equal to one half, I should say that here this is x minus c, x minus c, and then we'll notice that the epsilon neighborhood centered at x intersected with the closed interval bc in this case is empty. And so that arrives us at the same point, x is not a limit point. Now let's talk through why that's the case. We'll notice the limit point condition requires all epsilon to give us some sort of intersection between the epsilon neighborhood and the set. But here, we found an epsilon in each case where that intersection was, was totally empty, so there was no intersection. Now let's maybe sketch this out like we sketched out the other ones just to give us some intuition. So let's say here is the set B, C. So this first case is like X is living over here. But if X is living over here, what we do is we take half the distance between X and B, and this is our epsilon neighborhood. And that clearly doesn't intersect with B because we can't get close enough in order to be in this like intersection, or sorry, in this closed set B comma C. Okay, so just to reiterate what we have done, we have shown that every element in B comma C is a limit point of B comma C. So that's interesting in itself. And then we've shown that every element outside of B comma C is not a limit point. So that tells us that this closed interval B comma C is a closed set under this definition that we have over here. Okay, so now I'll clean up the board and we'll get to the proof of a classic result. So we'll finish off this video with a proof of a classic theorem relating closed sets with open sets, which we defined in a previous video. So we want to suppose that A is a subset of real numbers and we have that A is open if and only if A complement is closed. And further, A is closed if and only if A complement is open. So I should say we will only prove this first statement because the second statement follows immediately just by taking the complement of each set in the first statement and using the fact that A complement complement is A itself. Okay, so let's prove this first statement, and we will first prove the forward direction. So in other words, we need to suppose that A is open, and then prove that A complement is closed. So how we'll do that is assume that X is a limit point of a complement. And so those are our hypotheses to get us started. And notice what will finish this is the following. So we want to show that X is an element from A complement. That will show that A complement contains all of its limit points because we have chosen X to be an arbitrary limit point. But containing all your limit points is the same as being closed. Okay, great. So now what we want to do is notice that we have the following. So for all epsilon bigger than zero, we know that the epsilon x minus the set x, in other words, this thing that we could call the deleted epsilon neighborhood, intersected with a complement is not the empty set. Okay, and we know that because x is a limit point of a complement. So this kind of equation right here is exactly equivalent to being a limit point um, if you notice this definition which we have over here. Okay, great. But now what that tells us is that there exists some y inside of v epsilon x minus x um, and y is inside of a complement. In other words, y is not inside of a. Great. But then the fact that v epsilon x contains an element which is not inside of a tells us that v epsilon x is not a subset of a. Good. 
So now what we have is for all epsilon bigger than zero, the epsilon neighborhood centered at X is not a subset of A, but what that does is tells us that X is not in A. So let's talk our way through that. If X were in A, well, A is an open set, which means there exists an epsilon bigger than zero, such that this open neighborhood is contained in A. And that would like contradict this statement right here. So let's go ahead and write that down. This is because A is open. Great. But now if, a, if X is not in A, that tells us that X is in A complement which is exactly where we needed to end this direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the other direction. Now we're gonna look at the other direction. So we're gonna start by assuming that A complement is closed and we wanna show that A is open. And so we need to do that by taking an arbitrary element little a from A. And let's go ahead and recall that showing that A is open is equivalent to showing the following. So we want to show there exists some epsilon bigger than zero, such that when we take the epsilon neighborhood centered at A, that is completely contained within the set A. Okay, good. But now notice if little a is in capital A, then that tells us that little a is not in A complement. But A complement contains all of its limit points. So if it does not contain A, that means that A cannot be a limit point. So let's go ahead and write that down. So A is not a limit point of A complement. Great. But now we need to negate the definition of a limit point over here. But notice, negating this definition has us change this for all to a there exists. So there exists some epsilon bigger than zero such that V epsilon A, and then I'm going to go ahead and put set minus A. So in other words, the deleted epsilon neighborhood intersected with A complement is empty. So let's go ahead and talk our way through that. So this says it contains a point other than A, but containing a point other than A is really the same thing as saying this V epsilon A minus A intersect A is not empty. But here we need to negate this not empty, which means it is empty. Okay, but now what that tells us is that if this is non-intersecting with A complement,